And then finally also a welcome from my side. As Tua said, my name is Cecilia Bollwinkel and I work for EDN, the European Documentary Network, uh, where Tua was the first director. Uh, unfortunately, we never worked together. I only uh, started in the organization uh, after he had left. Uh, briefly about EDN, we're an international uh, membership organization for documentary professionals from all over the world where we provide knowledge, networking, um, information services, matchmaking, help with finding partners, financing, funding. Uh, we do that through our website and different seminars, workshops, pitching forums. I will not talk so much about EDN during uh, the seminar, but please come to me in the breaks if, if you want more information. And um, just a small anecdote on all these millimeter talks. When I started out in the business, my first job was also print coordinating and coordinating documentaries and short films. And that was also when I was sensing 35 millimeters around the world and having to put in these time periods to get the copy home to Denmark for repair and cleaning. So I also remember these days. But I think we're now ready to introduce our first speakers also from, from Denmark. So please take the floor. Uh, Liselotte Mikkelsen and Lisbeth Jules Sibbesen from the Danish Film Institute, who are here to talk about Filmcentralen, which I think, as far as I understand, is quite a unique service that you provide. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, and thank you for being invited here. Um, we had a bit of uh, technical problems here. I hope you will have patience with us. Furthermore, everything on the computer is in Russian, so we, a bit, uh, we have a bit of a problem once in a while, but I hope it will be okay. Um, yeah, as you can see here in the screen, my name is uh, Liselotte Mikkelsen, and uh, I'm communication manager of Danish Film Institute. My colleague, Lisbeth Juhl Sibbesen, and I will make a presentation of the streaming site Filmcentralen and the way the Danish Film Institute distribute documentaries and uh, short, short films also on this site. Um, first, I'll make a presentation, a short presentation of the Danish Film Institute DFI, the Film Institute, is a government agency under the Ministry of Culture. The main objective uh, of the Danish Film Institute is stated in the National Film Art. To promote film art and film and cinema culture in Denmark. It was founded in 1997 uh, when three institutions joined together. It was a Danish Film Institute with feature films, the National Film Board with shorts and documentaries, and the Danish Film Museum with the film archives. We have a lot of different tasks. For example, what is listed uh, here is that uh, the Danish Film Institute support programs for developing and production and distribution of films we make teaching resources, uh, we have a research library, and we have the national archives. Uh, the house you can see in the picture is a venue for film events. It is situated in the center of Copenhagen. And uh, we have a cinematic, and then we have Film Central. Um, it's a streaming site with short fiction and documentaries. There are no feature films on this streaming site. It opened three years ago in 2013, where the educational platform was launched. 
Since then, it has been expanded, and uh, there are now also two platforms for the general public. You can see it in this slide. There's one called For Everyone, um, and then there's uh, Education in the middle, and then there's one called Denmark on Film. The ambition with Film Centralen is to have a platform for short films and documentaries to give these formats more, more focus and not to drown among the feature films. Um, it is uh, accessible in different platforms, both computers, tablets, smartphone, and smartboard board that they use in the schools. We have a big variety of tar target groups on this site. There are private users and schools and high schools, which are six years to 19 years. Then there's museums, cultural institutions, local archives. And uh, soon to come, we will have a platform for kindergarten uh, which are three years to six years old. So it's a wide range uh, of audience. Now I'll present uh, one of the platforms, which is Film Central Denmark on Film. Um, and I'll show, uh, we'll show a short trailer to show you the content, if we can make it work. Um, Denmark on film, as you can see, is uh, archive footage. It was launched uh, last year in uh, October 2015. It's a streaming portal with uh, free access to documentary films of Danish origin. The project was made possible with uh, 340,000 euros from the Ministry of Cultural Affairs. It contains documentary film footage from 1899 to 1965. The ambition is to make cultural heritage available to the public, both in Denmark and abroad. Right now we have almost 400 films on the site, and there's a lot of fo more footage in the archives that will be digitalized soon. The films are free of copyright and can be streamed for free. There's been um, 170,000 uh, users during the last year 
for you, I think it's a very small number, but you should compare it with the size of the Danish population, which is only 5.7 million. I think it's almost the same as the uh, number of people living in St. Petersburg. 33% uh, during this last year have been returning visitors. There are some uh, special features on Denmark on film. You can make your own clips from the films if you find something especially interesting. And you can uh, geotag, put it on the map, uh, the clips and write your comments next to the clips. You can uh, search for clips and films from specific areas. Right now we have uh, 700 clips on the map and we get more all the time. Um, with this streaming site we wanted to go into collaboration with the audience. We encourage the users to write comments next to the films, telling their own stories, sharing memories, contributing with facts and knowledge. We also encourage the users to share clips through social media, to embed them in their own websites. It's all a share and care project. Um, it's not just a streaming site for Danes. We can see from our statistics that 10% of the users are watching the films and using the site from abroad. And even uh, though the site is called Denmark on Film, there's a lot of films with international celebrities. There are presidents and kings and queens and famous athletes. For example, I found this clip with a Russian long distance swimmer and it's from 1913. It's a silent film, as many of the films on this site. Let's see if we can show it to you. As you can see, there's a text beside the film, and uh, it says, the Russian long distance swimmer, Roman Shingo, visits Copenhagen. In the middle of the city, he jumps into the harbor and swims around. In the beginning of the 20th century, people were very interested in sports. One of Denmark's leading newspapers, Politiken, had a lot of focus on sports. In the film, journalist Anka Kirkeby talks with Roman Chingo, who was very famous for his stamina on long distances. So there's a lot of uh, quite funny old clips in, uh, in these old movies that uh, some of my colleagues found in the archives. They have been, it has been a treasure hunt because uh, a lot of the films, there was only a short title and they didn't know what was inside. So they have been very surprised sometimes. Um, now I'll change focus and talk about uh, another platform on Filmcentralen. It is uh, Filmcentralen for everyone. We had a bit of a problem finding a name <laughs> because 
it is for everyone. It's uh, it's uh, for old people and young people and a big variety of people. Um, the big t difference between Denmark on film and Film Centralen for alle, for everyone, uh, is that Denmark on film consists of footage which is free of copyright, whereas uh, the film on Film Centralen for everyone are original works of authorship protected by copyright. The ambition was to create a streaming site that promotes short fiction and documentary films. Um, and to make documentary films accessible for everyone in the country. Uh, also people living in the countryside, far from art house cinemas and film festivals, uh, which mostly, as here, takes place in the larger cities. Um, right now, there is a bit more than 600 films available on Film Central and for everyone. Uh, they are geo-blocked, so unfortunately you cannot see them in Russia. Uh, you can only see them in Denmark. Um, it's a question about uh, the rights, the streaming rights. Almost 400 of the films are documentary films. There are both uh, new film and old films and the film for, for all ages, both children, films, and for grown-ups. Um, there was uh, three, 370,000 uh, uh, users last year, and uh, 49 of the percent are, are returning users, and we are happy about that because it's a, a quite loyal group we have. Um, we have a, we do different things to to communicate the films. We have uh, editorial spots, as you can see here, where we put new films or uh, new collection of films, or something which is uh, uh, if if a, a well-known director has birthday, we put his film on top or something like that. Then we make uh, collections with films about, for example, women, women's rights, or it could be a collection uh, of film f films from a specific uh, film festival. Um, the first uh, spot here is from a collection of films from uh, Copenhagen Docs, the, the biggest documentary film festival in Copenhagen in Denmark. Um, then we ask uh, famous people, actors, directors, film critics to recommend their favorite films. And we have a top 10 of the most popular film this week. So we do a little a different things to, 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 to help the audience find the gold among all the films on the site. The films are primarily Danish productions and co-productions. Users can watch the films on Film Central for Everyone without restrictions and without subscription and password. The streaming site is, is purely government funded. The acquisition rights for Film Central for Everyone is based on a voluntary principle and respects the industry's earning potential on, um, on other platforms. The Film Institute requires the non-exclusive right to distribute the films to private users only in Denmark. If the film is uh, rather new, six months old, and has been shown in the television, then we can put it on Film Central, and uh, the filmmakers get 6,700 euros for a documentary. And if the film is more than five years old, they receive uh, 1,300 euros. Film Central for Everyone is also a film database. If a film cannot be viewed directly on the site, um, uh, the site directs the viewers to other services where the film can be viewed. 
These might be commercial services or the public libraries, streaming site, film stream. A pop-up window, as you see here, will lead the user to the right sites. This part of Film Central for Everyone is devised in partnership with the Danish Producers Association. A final note concerning Film Central for Everyone is that uh, the future is unfortunately a bit uh, uncertain for this site. It takes a lot of resources and a lot of funding to run the site. And right now it seems that there might not be resources and funding enough. So uh, things look better for another platform on Film Central, and uh, that is uh, Film Central Education. And Lisbeth will uh, talk to you about that. Yes, hello. My name is Lisbeth Juhl Sibesen, and I am the editor of Film Educational Materials on Film Central Education. Danish schools have a long-standing tradition for using films in the classroom. For years, the DFI have played an important part in helping teachers and pupils gain access to quality short and documentary films and educational materials. The DFI has distributed films to schools since the 1930s. The possibility for children in Denmark to experience understand and create films is central to the DFI strategy. High quality film streaming has seen a breakthrough in recent years, giving film a whole new potential as a teaching tool. The DFI's former streaming service, Filmstrieben, had existed since 2007 and we made it in collaboration with DBC, Danish Library Center, and it proved to be a great success with schools, libraries, and other public institutions. But the DFI had an ambition to create their own dissemination platform with a smaller target group, which meant only schools, elementary and high schools, and a dedicated focus only on teaching. A study of the needs and desires of students and teachers in schools was carried out and inspiration was gathered from other teaching portals at home and abroad, focusing on film, media and teaching. So, in 2013 we launched Film Central Education and our former streaming site Filmstreben still exists but only as a service to libraries. The purpose of Film Central Education is to promote the use of short and documentary films in classroom and to raise the quality of film appreciation and film education efforts in schools. So the service includes more than 1,600 short and documentary films, more than 550 teaching materials for short documentaries and also feature films. And uh, Film Central Education is funded by school subscription fees. So according to the size of the school, the price is from 150 to 270 euros per year. So this is the big difference between this platform and the two other platforms that is Lotte talked about, that this one is, you have to pay. So 90% of 1300 elementary schools have subscribed and 93% of 150 high schools have subscribed. And in addition, we also serve approximately 800 other institutions, churches, business colleges, folk high schools, etc. So, number of streams have been growing since 2008 and seem to have reached a maximum so far. In 2015, approximately 600,000 short and documentary films were streamed, as you can see on the column at the right. And this year, until the 1st of July, we had like 380,000 streams, so the number might be rising again. The DFI's rights to stream the films vary according to the terms under which the individual film has been supported and which kind of financial support the film has received. But as a starting point, we have the non-exclusive rights to make the films available in classrooms and at libraries. 
So it works on all the standard media platforms, as Lisa Lotte already told you. And it's a flexible universe where students and teachers have complete access to all the content and features both at school and at home via login. Yes, so let me show you. Um, So this is the front page of Education Elementary School. We also have a separate entrance for high schools. It, they look the same, they have the same visual expression, but they promote different films and different uh, materials. So at the top we have editorial spots, changing according to what is new, specific movies, specific study guides. And uh, at the bottom of the page we have uh, recent films, reaching materials and recent articles and collections. And so in the middle of the page, you have these three buttons where you can watch movies, find educational material, and use our online film lexicon, which is a very big online reference work about film language, uh, giving students and teachers a common language for analyzing films. So if you push uh, the button of watch films, you can search a film regarding to, for example, grade and type and theme, etc. And if you look at documentary films, we have 940 Danish documentary films at the moment and 93 foreign documentary films. And you can also search for a specific title. If you can make that work. <laughs> yeah, but just. For example, Varicella, which was made in Denmark in 2015 by the Russian director Viktor Kosakovsky. This is from St. Petersburg, and Varicella takes place here. It's about two sisters uh, attending the Russian Academy of Ballet, sharing the same dream of becoming a solo ballet dancer, which is very, very difficult. And the film is part of a series called Sport Kids about children from Denmark, Sweden, Japan, and Russia, uh, being very dedicated to our sport. So Film Central education is developed in order to maximize availability and usability in the classroom. So for instance, by using the buttons here underneath, um, teachers and students can make their own playlists of films and clips and screenshots to be used in presentations and assignments. They can also share content with other students and colleagues. And so the film can be included in various work-related contexts besides just being shown in the classroom. And when you have made a playlist of, for example, documentary films or, or clips, etc., you can save it in My Film Central and uh, make your own playlist that you can al always find. wanted to show you that I made my own playlist called St. Petersburg, with all the films that I have been watching before coming here. <laughs> and um, I would like to show you a, a clip from Varicella, but as the, the site is geo-blocked, I can't show you on Film Central, and I want to show you the trailer instead.
luzes. It's a beautiful film. So, mm -hmm. well, film in classroom is not just about watching, it's also about, it can communicate all kind of subjects and contents. And um, as I already told you, it features more than 550 different educational materials. And in 2015, we had 430,000 views. So, some of the latest uh, documentary materials we made include Faith of Afghanistan, which is six documentaries about being a child in Afghanistan today. And the material is aimed at children and young people at the age of nine to 16. And we also made Into Nature with Tobias, which is a collaboration with the Copenhagen Zoo. And uh, it's four films and study guides about the four different seasons of nature in Denmark. And it's aimed at children at the age of seven to 10. And recently, we also made a very huge material about uh, Ayasbo, which is a documentary film about uh, a very well-known and recognized Danish author who died quite young. And uh, this material includes uh, clips from the film, for example. Um, clips from the film, as you can see on the left. And uh, it also includes, we made 11 filmed interviews with the director and the composer of the film. Uh, the director that you see here in the picture, uh, talking about all the aspects of making this film. And uh, we also have included uh, one of the author's short stories and the manuscript and uh, all the press material, etc. So um, the streaming numbers show us that when a film is included in, a, in, a, in an educational material, it reaches a bigger audience. So the numbers of streams are rising. So it's a good way to promote and communicate films by using films as part of materials. We both provide children and young people with valuable information and we extend and expand the lives of short and documentary films. Yes. So this was the last slide, the end of our presentation. And thank you for your attention and now if there are any questions. Yes, thank you very much for, for this introduction. Um, and I would like to start with, with a question. Um, now that the focus of this conference is very much on, on audience reach, I was thinking when, when you present uh, Film Central and it says films for, for everyone, that's a very, very big target group. Um, can, can you s say a bit more about how you work with different target groups in terms of, of ages? Um. Yeah, uh, it's, well, we had a lot of trouble finding the name for that site and it ended with a not very, very great name. So uh, you're quite right. Um, well, actually, with the Denmark on Film, Facebook has been a great place to reach the audience. Uh, it seems like these small clips, like the long distance swimmer you saw, uh, they fit so well into Facebook, where people are used to small, funny clips, and they don't care about the quality. They're used to this home video look. Um, so they just think if it's the contain is funny or touching or something that they know, it could be, a, a, for example, the highest spot in Denmark called Himmelbjerg uh, Sky Mountain. It's not very high, but still that's the name. Everybody has been there. So if I put a small film with this uh, with this place in. 1935, people find it funny because they have been there. Um, the site for everyone, it's, uh, we have been using newsletters, of course, and we've been using advertising, and we have been in uh, festivals and stuff like that. So in this, in this site, we use more different 
kind of, of uh, uh, ways to get in touch with the audience. And when it's about education, it's the teachers. We have a, a good network with the teachers, and then the teachers are kind of our ambassadors to the children. So if we get in touch with the teachers, then they take it to the children. And, and do you have an idea of, of the age of the users of the sites? Is that something you can track? Yeah, uh, we can track it both through uh, Google Analytics, which is a great tool, um, and we can track it also through, um, we've, we've been uh, asking the users. So on Denmark on Film, we were surprised that we thought, okay, probably the audience will be like 55 and up. But actually, a lot of young people find this site interesting too. So that was a bit of a surprising finding. Um, in, in schools, of course, it's the, the school age who is watching primarily. And, and I noticed when I visited the site, the Denmark on Film, that it says, like, watch films and, and share your knowledge. How important is the interactivity part? Are there a lot of users who are also being interactive, and is that also what attracts them to the site? Yeah, here the, the Facebook is our friend and our enemy, because people put all their comments on Facebook and we cannot get it into our site. We want people to comment on the site because when they comment on Facebook, you know, it, it disappears when some time has gone and it's a lot of nice comments. Uh, it's actually now 60% of the users coming from Facebook and putting their common comments on Facebook. Sometimes if we find a very good comment and we, and we see it, it's not always we see it, then we copy paste it and put it into the site. Um, but um, yeah, that's a, a, a dilemma. And as I quickly mentioned in the introduction, it, as far as I know, it's quite a unique service. Do you know of other countries or film institutions that, that has something like this? Yeah, it's, it's actually really funny because in Britain, um, we, we thought that they might have a you know, small uh, camera and a microphone in, uh, in the room where we developed Denmark on Film because almost in the same day that we, uh, that we launched Denmark on Film, they launched Britain on Film. So they have exactly the same thing and exactly the same name. I don't think they have this uh, location, the map where you can put the uh, clips but, uh, but some of the other features are the same. But that's really a coincidence. It's really uh, funny that we have been thinking the same. And of course, it's because of the streaming uh, possibilities that has risen that this has happened. And are there any questions from the room so far? Yeah. I have a question about this uh, archive footage. Is it all in public domain? <clears throat> but uh, you haven't made it d downloadable, have you? Uh, this uh, <clears throat> you can't you can't download these uh, old films, can you? No. No, no. Well, almost all of it is public domain, but some of the films has uh, has music rights that that. Uh, 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 narrows it in the, the copyrights in, but no, you cannot download it because um, if you if you, you had the possibility to download it, we couldn't really control what is happening with it. Then people could cut it up and use it for uh, purposes. That Pre precisely my point. Yeah. <laughs> why, why why not? Yeah, but <clears throat> it's well, we really wanted to do that, but. Um, the Danish uh, Producers Association, they are like sitting on our backs with their claws and they are very protective of all footage. Are they familiar so, with uh, the term public domain? Yes, and it has been a <laughs> long discussion and we, have, we really want to you know, set it completely free. But as it is now, we can only offer embeds. So if it was our decision, we would set it all free. Okay, thank you very much.
And can you say a bit more also about the, the selection of films? Because of course, a lot of shorts and documentaries are funded by the Danish Film Institute. Do they automatically have to end up at your site? Is that part of the contract or, or how does that work? Yeah, at Film Central Education, everything that is funded by the Danish Film Institute will automatically end up at Film Central Education. Um, and then we also have a budget for buying films. So, for example, we would like to have a very many different films for all the subjects in school. And we found out that we, we nearly we didn't have any films for like teaching English, French, German. Etc. So a couple of years ago, we s we said to each other, we have to find these kind of films, and we went to different festivals, and we bought short stories for German, French, and English. And uh, at the moment, we are buying. We have the focus on buying films for a preschool, as we are launching film education for kindergarten. So it's, we're buying for the small ones. But it's sometimes it's a problem because we only have a limited budget for buying films, and there are so many films we would like to buy. But, uh, and we can't, I mean, we can't control what is funded by the institute, so sometimes we're like, why don't they make more films for children, for example, but, well, can't really do something about that, so, um, yeah. Any other comments from the room? Uh, yes. I have a rather technical question about the rights. You said the, your contact mostly content. Uh, most of the films that are supported by the Danish government, but not only. Can you just tell us more about the rights, the property right, about the intellectual rights, the author's rights a bit more? Thank you. I mean, who holds the rights in the end? always uh, the filmmakers who hold the rights in the end. Um, when when uh, the film get funding from the Danish Film Institute, the, they sign in the contract that uh, they, they give the right to distribute the film on uh, the education platform, only the education platform. And the uh, we can only, we cannot put the film on the education platform until the, its commercial life is over. It's a protection of the commercial life. So the film should have a, a premiere. It should have been shown, been shown in the cinemas, on festivals, and on television. So the life is kind of, the, the commercial life has been ended and then we put it on education platform. Yeah. Was that uh, answer enough? Yes, thank you, but I also wanted to ask, are there any alternatives to this commercial life? Like some code too, or how do you define when the commercial life is over? Well, uh, in this, these films that ends in the in the education platform, uh, the commercial li when the commercial life is over is defined by it has uh, no more life in the cinema, and uh, it has been shown in TV, because when it has been shown in TV, the teachers can um, record it and use it in in the classroom. So then it's kind of free for the teachers. But still, of course, the commercial life uh, in, uh, in Film Central and for Alec could be much, much longer. And that's why we just offer the opportunity <coughs> to sell uh, for Film Central and for Alec, but it's completely voluntary. And if you don't want to sell it for Film Central Alec, then you shouldn't. And you can sell it five years after the, the premiere when you have earned money on DVDs and your own streaming site and so on. So it's voluntary. Then I want to say something else. 
in the contract it's written that the distributor is your education portal. So on the one hand, oh, I have to give it to distribution, but as a producer of the film, I don't have to give it to you guys for the distribution, right? To, uh, you, you have, yeah, it says in the contract that you should give it to the education side only, which is uh, non-exclusive, yeah, non yeah, but but it doesn't say that you should give it to Film Central for Ellen, so it's very different. So, if I want it in education, I give it to Film Central or to nobody, right? I'm not sure I understand, but for Film Central education, you, you don't really have a choice. If you're funded by the institution, then you give the rights to the non-exclusive distribution, yes. And for everybody, you have a choice. So we see that some of the most famous documentary films in Denmark, they are not necessarily given to Elle because they keep on having a life outside of this site. Uh, thank you. And the rights, you have, um, you have then exclusive rights or do I keep some rights for other distribution rather than films at Allen Education for Portal? It's non-exclusive rights. My last question about the Danish films. Those films who are not supported by the government, by the Danish government, for example, Kazakowski, what are the conditions that you have these films on? It's, well, it's a, it's a co-production, so it, it, it's had some kind of funding from the Danish Film Institute um, and from other partners also. but it, has, there has to be some kind of link to the Danish Film Institute to, so that we can have it on our online site. But also we, uh, we buy films that have, uh, that has not been funded by the Danish Film Institute. And uh, uh, it's, we have not a small amount of money each year to buy films. Um, and uh, then we make a contract in completely normal terms. I got you. Then I want to ask perhaps my last question. Financial question. You said about the contract, but you still pay some money. Do you pay once and that's it? Or it depends on the number of screenings, how much you pay. And also, please tell me, the whole site, the money for the whole site comes from Danish government or there are other sources of financing? Uh, for the site, Film Central, and for everyone, we pay once. We pay one amount and, and that's it. Um, and uh, what was the second question? That, that was a question. Oh, yeah, it was, and it's purely government funded. So, if there's anyone here who wants to sell a film to you, what should they do? Well, then you should uh, send it to us. You can see our, our emails here. And then uh, two times a year, we uh, take a look at films sent to us or films that we have found because we go to film festivals and, and uh, watch films in uh, streaming sites and so on. We're always looking for great films for children. Uh, so uh, so you're, if you have a, well, the films we buy are films for children, so, so bear that in mind. Uh, but if you have a great film for, for children, you're, of course you're welcome to send it for us. To so, us. so it's not children and young people? Yeah, children and young people. Up uh, to? Age, age three to 19, that's, uh, that's the, our primary audience. Just a little question to you. Does something like this in a smaller scale, bigger scale exist here in Russia? Streaming service like that? No, I don't know of any sites like that in Russia. 
we're starting to have other kind of sites. For example, Netfilm, but, but they're specializing on chronicles. So it's technically a shop for cinema chronics, chronicles. You can look at the site, because they have quite a lot of material. You can choose something by the rights to use their films, um, like Mikhail was asking earlier. But I wanted to ask you something else. Not only children, not only for children you have films, you also have films for grown-ups, right? And then how do you how do you get more films for grown-ups? Actually, we had until half a year ago. Then, uh, as I, I told you earlier in the in the speech, Film Central for everyone is right now put on standby because we we lack resources and we lack funding. So right now we do not buy films for this side. Unfortunately, I would have love to tell you that we would but that's not the reality right now we only buy films for the education platform very bad news actually well are there any other people here who who know about if i'm going to watch russian documentaries is there a site where i can go and sit and watch rootracker.org <laughs> Rootracker.org is perhaps the best resource where you can watch a documentary. Why are you laughing? <laughs> is it funny or what? <laughs> it's illegal. Okay. Very good news. <laughs> Any other ideas of this? Okay. Yeah, well, then I think it's time to say thank you very much for the presentation and the insights.